What's going on, everybody? Xavier Porter, Shoot the Five Lama Direct. I got, I got the champ in front of me, Serena McCoy. How you feeling today? I'm good. How are you? Miss W I B A champ. How, you, how 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 does that feel? How does that sound to you? It feels good. I I put in a lot of work to get here, so you know to actually have it, it feels good. Okay. How did how did this fight come about for you? Um, well, you know, Ryan Wizzo is the founder of the WIBA belt. Um, and he has been following me on socials for a while, but because I have gotten, you know, seven or six fights prior to this one, I just decided that, you know, it was about time for me to start hitting titles, you know, because I'm already ranked, I think number nine in the IBO. Okay. Yeah, and then I'm ranked number two in the U.S. And I'm ranked number 29, I believe, or 28, 28 or 29 in the world. Okay. So I'm, like, you know, I'm where I need to be at positioned, where I need to be to start going for all these different belts, you know? And some of the greats have had the WIBA. So I was like, well, you know, I have to get this one. <laughs> So I was like, well, this would be the perfect first belt for me to get. So yeah. I just told Ryan about it. And I was like, hey, Ryan, I really want to fight for this belt. How do we go about getting that set up? And then, you know, it was just mainly about finding a venue, finding a date, and finding an opponent. Like, when can't tell me that, like, that's the last minute. So the, title, so the title was vacant in your division at the Flyweight Division? Yeah, it was vacant. Okay. Um, what did you think of your opponent? You know what? My opponent had a lot of heart. Yeah, that's one thing that I can say about pretty much everybody that I fight. I don't use, I don't really usually get easy fights. Like, that's never been my thing. Like, my, the whole time that I've ever been boxing. Um, and I used to complain about it a lot when I was in the amateurs. I used to always be like, I never get easy sparring sessions. It always seems like everybody else gets the easy sparring sessions. Everybody else gets the easy <laughs> And I always, I always feel like I'm fighting for my life in that ring. And, you know, it builds character. Now, I definitely don't complain about it now. Um, I respect it. My opponent had a lot of heart and she was, she wanted that belt. Okay. I would say that she really didn't want that belt. And she was, she was trying to knock me out. <laughs> like some of the punches she was missing. I go back and I watch the video and I'm like, dang, if she would have landed that, that would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That would hurt. I don't know. I feel like that one would hurt. One thing, one thing I also see that I, I, I do recognize that you are, your, 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 your fan support, you know, a lot of people are really starting to pay more attention to you than, than, than they're supporting you. I see a lot of, I see that you're online and I see that a lot of, you're, you're conducting a lot of interviews, you're, you know, joint podcasts. How, how has that been from, you know, from when you first started to where you're at now? How, how does it feel? When I first started, I was so far behind everybody else because I started later than everybody else. You know, most people think started like six or eight. I started at 11. I didn't start competing until I was 12. So, so far behind everybody else. Like whenever I would go to fights, I was always the underdog every time. Like I, I had, I had nobody cheering for me my first few fights. Yeah. Nobody. And actually, you know, what? my first, like, I guess you could say supporters at fights was actually one of my opponents and, and her family. Because I believe she was my third fight. Her name is Daisy Bamberger. She's still in the amateur. She's really, really good. Um, so she's coached by her dad, Mario. And, you know, my first three amateur fights, I had no support, like, other than the people that I came with. My coaches, my dad, that's it. Like everybody else cheered for the other person that I was fighting, especially because it was like um, show fights. It wasn't tournaments, it was show fights. So I had no support, none. Like not even any unbiased people. Like what I mean to tell you, like how, how I get booed in Mexico for being American sometimes is how I got booed because nobody knew who I was. That just popped up, you know? But after I fought Daisy, my third amateur fight, you know, like, we spoke to her, we spoke to her dad, we met her family, and they're actually really cool people. Like, we're really close to them even now. 
you know, like Mario will call my dad and be like, oh, what's up, bestie? And my dad's like, what's up, bestie? And they like talk on the phone and stuff like for a really long time, all the time. So, you know, that was like the first people that I ever had support me because we would end up fighting on the same cards, you know, frequently after that, like after fighting each other. She went up and I stayed the same. Um, but we would like end up fighting on the same cards. And then eventually I started having people like cheer for me little by little. But it's like, mm-hmm. I had to fight people in order to get like a little bit of support. So like, I'm not really used to having so much support and I appreciate it a lot. Like I'm a very grateful person. I was always taught to be very grateful for what I have, you know? So it, it wasn't a problem for me. It's just new to me. You know, it's, it's crazy to me. Kind of doesn't feel real when I have people reaching out to me, like I have little kids like messaging me on my my page, telling me like, you know, I look up to you, you're an inspiration or like coming to me for like, people are coming to me for advice. Like, oh, I'm looking to turn pro. Do you have any advice for me? Or, you know, I'm really nervous for my first, for my first amateur fight. Can you give me advice? Can you calm me down? Like, that's really crazy to me. Like I never thought I'd be giving advice to people who don't know me, like helping calm them down, helping, you know, there was actually this girl at the gym that I started at, the Richard Stowe boxing gym. She was like trying to lose her last few pounds and she was struggling. So she pulled me to the side and she's like, look, you know, this is my situation. I, I really need help. Like, what do you do? I've been seeing you in the gym for a really long time now. Like, can you give me advice? So I gave her advice and then I like checked on, I checked with her, like back in with her, texting her throughout the next few days, texted her the morning of her fight, texted her after her fight, you know everything like that it's just crazy like I I look back I'm like wow like I didn't think this far ahead when I first started I never thought that I would be here like (laughs) it didn't even cross my mind I'm glad that you mentioned um the sparring factor because I see that you know every time you're well a lot of times when you're in training I see you're sharing the ring with other male fighters some contenders some up and coming um prospects things of that nature Are, are, Mm -hmm. are you taking any tips from them are you actually sparring with any of the men well, most of the men that I'm in the ring with, they are my teammates. So we all train together. We all train under the same coach for the camp or just, you know, everyday mm-hmm. training um, with our coaches. So sometimes I do spar them. Sometimes I just get pointers from them. Uh, it just depends on who it is, where it is, when it is. You know, obviously they are more of a help to me than I can be to them. You know, uh, but I do occasionally spar my teammates. It, it just depends on the situation. Uh, but as far as like sparring men, yeah, mostly I have to spar men because I'm usually the only girl or one of the only girls in the gym, in every gym at all times. <laughs> and then um, there's just, there's just a, a very small amount of women fighters in Vegas. So I don't really have a choice but to spar men, but I prefer sparring men anyways. Yeah, that was gonna. I was gonna ask you that question. Like, is it hard to find female sparring partners out there? Then it is to just, cause like you said, men are always in the gym. They're doing whatever they're doing. That was gonna be my next question. You already answered it. So yeah, there used to be a lot of women boxers in Vegas when I was like in the amateurs, just starting out, just turning into like a tournament kid in the beginning of my amateur career. There was a lot of like female work here, but now there's not. So, you know, unless somebody travels here, I don't really have any work, not from female. Like I have to get male work, but I think male work is better for me. Like I, I learn more working with guys. Any of the, how would I say the established women champions, women fighters reached out to you to offer any support, you know, to see, cause you're, you're growing, your popularity is growing, your skill level is growing. You've already won the title. Have any of the, um, I would say, like the the champions, the the fighters, female fighters who've been in the sport longer, have they reached out to you to offer support and give you suggestions and encouragement? Honestly, no. Like, I, I'm i very supportive of, you know, the women in the sport, the women that I'm friends with, any, like, any woman that's in my life or, like, even somebody that I just seen, I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I'm always very supportive. You know, I'll repost it on my story, like whether it's on my box, like on my, I usually I do that on my main, you know, not my boxing, like my boxing, I try to keep it as business as like possible. Um, so usually I like, I repost every. But 
but I haven't really gotten any support from any established women fighters. No, like, oh, hey, I see you doing your thing or, oh, hey, I think what you're doing is amazing. I've gotten none of that. Like everything that I do, any support that I get, I get within my team. That's it. Like uh, if it's not my team or people that I like was in the amateurs with or I was on Team USA with, like I don't get support from from any established professional fighters. The only professional woman fighter who has like reached out to me in some form is Cecilia Brockes. Like she has followed me back on social media um, on Instagram, she has reposted things from my story that I've tagged her in, you know, like responded to DMs. But other than that, like I have I have not received any support from like established professional females. Okay. Now, you mentioned your team. Are you still um, independent or have you signed with a promoter yet? I'm so independent as of right now. I have been in talks with a few different places, but we've been in talks since the pandemic. I'm just trying to hit my goal independently first before I'm like, all right, so this is really what I want. You know, like, this is what I would really want. Are you willing to give it to me? <laughs> now, what is that goal? My goal, so I want to get at least 10 fights independently. I feel like as a woman boxer, the more that I can prove that I can do by myself, the more I can, you know, request to do with them. You know, like this, I've proven myself. Now you need to prove yourself to me. You know, I'm, I, I know what I deserve. I know how hard I work. I know how hard my team, you know, my, my dad, my coaches, my teammates who have helped me have like worked to get me here and to get up my career off the ground. So I wanna make sure that I get everything that I deserve and that I can provide everything that my team deserves and needs to get me going to where we're trying to get me. Where do you, where do you, where do you feel women's boxing is right now? Where do you, and where do you feel that it needs to go? <clears throat> I feel like it's still like elevating. It's still on the way back to where it once was. Uh, people are, are gaining more and more attraction to it. I feel like there's a lot of things that's still wrong with it or a lot of things that still need to be improved, especially the aspect of women supporting women. You know, it's very easy for women to say women supporting women. And then when it actually comes to the supporting part, they don't do it. You know, so it costs absolutely nothing to repost a picture on your, on your story. It costs absolutely nothing to comment a clap emoji a muscle emoji, a good job, a congratulations, a good luck. It costs you no money, mm. no money. Like I'm pretty sure most of these women spend more time DMing people who will probably never DM them back than they do supporting women who probably need that support, you know? And also it's like, you look at these male boxers and as much as, as us women or would like to sit here in interviews and say, oh, well, we want to be equal to the men and we want to get paid as much as they do and we want this and we want that. We don't do what they do. You know, these men, they fight each other, but they're still cool, you know? Even, even when they fight each other and they're talking crap about each other, they are supporting each other in the way of reposting stuff about their opponent, even if it's just a trash talk. That is putting them on whether it's in a negative way or not, because that is, that's the business aspect of when you're going to fight somebody, mm -hmm. you know, you're still supporting them by reposting them, by talking about them. You're having your people look at who you're about to fight and they can go to them because of what you're reposting. And then, you know, after they fight, they're back cool again, you know, or like they have friends and they're like, Oh, good luck to my brother. My brother did so good. They watch each other's fights. They, they cheer each other on. They tell each other good luck. You know, we don't we do not do that. And that's a problem. You know, I try my best to be like, oh, good luck. You know, I'm rooting for you. You know, repost. I see something or I, I just comment. I'll comment. I'll comment a hard eye. I'll comment a fire emoji. I'll comment something. I'm going to comment something. <laughs> you know, like, I'll comment and talk trash, but I'm going to comment something. Okay. Um, but I just feel like that's an issue. Like, it's really easy to say women supporting women. But if honestly, if you want to be where the guys are, then we need to support each other and get each other up there. We're not doing that. 
we're so busy trying to get up there ourselves that we are going to step on each other's necks to get there when we need to be lifting each other up. Like we need to work together, even if we're fighting each other, because in the ring, I hate everybody. Like in the ring, none of you are my friends, mm -hmm. but out of the ring, we're besties. I have no beef with nobody. In the ring, I'm like, I don't know you and I don't like you, but outside the ring, we can go get Starbucks. I don't care. You know, I'm good. I'm good. Because what, what I do, it's, it's not for the love that I have of boxing, but it's for the sport. You know, what we do impacts the sport in the future. So we need to do better. Honestly, we need to do better. As a fighter, how are you able to turn it on and turn it off? I compartmentalize. I compartmentalize. I keep it in a little box in the back of my head. That's how I keep it in a little box. I just just unlock it when I'm about to get in there. And then I just, just lock it right back up when I get out. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not a I'm not really a nationally angry person. I'm I'm a very like outgoing social person. Mm -hmm. So it's like not hard for me to be that person. And you know, I've I've fought in people who were like this with me. And mm -hmm. I we finish the fight and we're hugging, going to get dipping dots after. Like, you know, it's, it's, you just have to know how to separate the business from the personal. Now, if it's personal, you know, I'm not going to mess with you in or out the ring. But if it's just business, then, you know, keep, keep it business. Don't drag other people into drama that should be kept as business. Don't cause personal drama that should be kept as business. It's business, you know? And as long as you have that understanding, even if the other person doesn't, that's how you that's how you do it you know this is business like the one thing that I can say is that like me and my dad are two different people like two very different people but he did teach me how to how to separate the personal from the business so I don't I don't have any personal feelings about it because it's business and when you start putting your personal feelings in business that's where you start messing up you discuss the relationship with you and your father because I, I really applaud it. I really love it. The fact that he's always been there for you and support you and, and you know help you guide your career and everything. But the fact that y'all have this father and daughter relationship outside of boxing is another aspect which I really respect and love as well. So can you kind of you know touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, you know, I still live with my dad and like so I see him every day. And me and my dad, like I said, me and my dad are two different people. Like I'm very outgoing. I'm very like, <laughs> I would say emotional, but I'm a very emotional person. You know, like I, I feel a lot. There's a lot of feelings going on on the inside at all times. Okay. <laughs> and he is not that type of person. He's very reserved. He's to himself, you know? So like a lot of people see me in the gym and they're like, is your dad not like me? And I'm like, no, nah, that's just his face. You know, <laughs> like, and I'd be bugging him all the time. Like he'd be in the gym chilling. I go over there, I'll have a dance battle. A one person dance battle, cause he doesn't, he doesn't participate, but it's okay. It's okay. Cause I still be having fun. You know, we, be, we play fighting, he'd be losing. I, I just want to put that out there. We play fighting, he losing. <laughs> ain't never took L, all right? No, but um, it's, I definitely feel like it is beneficial to me um, personally. And as far as my career, because, you know, a lot of females, they either get really, really close to their dad when they get grown or they get really, really distant from their dad when they get grown. But I feel like doing this together, we it keeps us close. You know, like the older I get, the more I'm like living my own life separate from my parents. You know, so it's like to have this sport at this age that I'm at, you know, and growing up because I was doing this throughout the time of like, oh, hitting puberty, like starting to, you know, like other things and starting to get, wanna be pretty and go out and take cute pictures and this and that and like go on dates and stuff, you know? So it's like, like going through all that, that those growing pains, you could, it could either make or break a father daughter relationship. So, you know, I feel like working in the sport together, it keeps us close and also, um, you know, I can constantly get on his nerves, especially <laughs> when it's like really, really close to fight time. Mm -hmm. I'd be pushing, I'd be getting on him, I'd be working his nerves. And I'm like, well, you can't do nothing because I got to fight. And he's mm -hmm. like, I'm about to be your fight. And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> okay, no, you're not. I got things to do. Okay. So I be, I know I'd be working his nerves when it's close to fight time because he'd be like, you can't do nothing to me because I got to fight. So. <laughs> 
That's what's up. That's what's up. So what do we what can we expect in the in the in the in the near future from the champ, the WIBA champ? Well, I'm gonna my goal, if everything goes to plan, if it's all in God's will, is to hit four more fights this year. Wow. For the end of the year, four more fights. Uh hopefully one of those, at least one of those fights is gonna be for another title. And hopefully at least one of those fights is gonna be my US debut. So we're working on that, you know, is a long process. I don't want to say a long and hard process, but it's a long and hard process. And it's not because of us. Okay. We're being so cooperative. It's, it's, yeah. I don't want to say it's everybody else, but it's everybody else, you know? So we're, we're working on that. Uh, I will be keeping you guys updated as I find out more on my boxing Instagram. Uh, but as far as right now, that is the goal. And I am looking to do like a major title fight by next year. Okay. Okay. All right. That, that sounds like a great plan. Great plan. Is there anything you want to say to your, um, you know, your fans and your friends out there before I let you go? Well, I just want to, well, I want to thank you first of all for having me on here. Um, thank, you and I want to, thank you again. Thank you. And I just want to say like, thank you to everybody who supports me, everybody who watches me. You know, I really appreciate it. I really do appreciate the support and like all the love that I've been getting. Um, it's really cool to be like meeting all these new people and getting to know people. You know, when, when I go on live and I'm just like having a dance party or like I'm talking to people, like, you know, I was on live a few days ago because I got like a whole bunch of new outfits and I was like, <laughs> oh, let's have a fashion show. So like everybody in the comments and they were participating. Like when I first started my pro career i would go live all the time and i would get maybe like four people on my live and they would yeah. just stare they wouldn't talk to me they would just stare at me just stare and i'm like well are you guys gonna talk or you know but mm. now i get like like multiple people in in my live at one at one time and you know they're all talking to me they're all participating they're all having conversations with me so like I was in there I was like oh let's have a fashion show do you guys want that or no and they're like yeah let's do it so I like on all my outfits and I had like music I had music while I stepped out of the camera to change and mm -hmm. they were just like talking amongst themselves while I was like like changing and then they were like they rated my outfits and like we talked about like our favorite colors and stuff like that. Like, you know, it's really cool to meet all these new people. And I'm like, wow, y'all are all the way somewhere else. Like yeah. supporting, like there's people from Brazil and they're right. supporting me. Yeah, from Rio and they're supporting me. And I'm like, oh, that's far, like, yeah. thank you. I didn't even know that I exist over there, y'all. Like, you know, I didn't know y'all knew about me from all the way over there, but I, it's appreciated, you know, yeah. it is appreciated. For sure. So I want to just thank everybody for, you know, supporting me. And I want to thank my team and my dad for dealing with me because I'm a lot to handle. Definitely more than two hands full. It does take a village for me. It takes a village, a whole village, maybe two, <laughs> maybe two villages. I don't know. You know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta come together and, and you know, hold yeah. hands, work together, <laughs> especially with me. I, you know, I'm a little difficult at times. <laughs> There's a lot going on in this in this little little person that I am. There's there's a lot going on, so you know I want to thank them as well for dealing with that because I know that I'm not the easiest to deal with. But unfortunately for everyone else, I will continue to be myself. So <laughs> before I let you go, we got a huge fight coming up. Southpaw, I just want to get your opinion on the Southpaw against Southpaw because you are Southpaw. Oh no! Don't <laughs> ask me. <laughs> <Everyone's good. laughs> everyone's against. Manny Pacquiao. I, gotta, I don't. I got to ask the Southport, what you think of the Southport? I can't choose. They're literally, they're literally in my top three, both of them, in my mm. top three. And it's like, I feel like if I choose one, I'm betraying the other one. And mm. then I think if I choose one on one of these interviews and then I meet them and they have <laughs> seen them, like, Remember when you didn't choose me to win that fight? Yeah. And I'm like, no, I ain't say that. You always say it could be a draw because they both are Southpaws. I hope it's a, I hope it's a draw. Okay, I don't want either of them to lose. I, I no. love them both. They're both my top, top three. They're okay. both in my top. I don't know. I just, I can't choose. It's like, uh, I, I'm gonna have to be 
in the middle. I'm Switzerland for that whole fight. Hey. You know, the whole fight. I'm going to be cringing every time each one of them gets punched. I'm going to be like, ooh, mm. ooh, ooh. <laughs> ah. All right, cool. Well, thanks again. WIBA Flyweight Champion, Mr. Serena McCoy, undefeated champion. Appreciate you coming <laughs> on and continued success. And I'm definitely going to speak to you real soon. Of course. Yeah, anytime. Thanks again. All right. Enjoy the day. All right. You as well. All right. Bye. Bye.